Okay guys, welcome to this episode. What we're gonna be covering today is how to start a successful design business. So by the end of this video, we're gonna go through some tactical things, but you're gonna come away with a really good way to think about how to start. Because at the end of the day, getting started, building the right foundations is more important than just drastically taking action in a direction without understanding what the consequence of that action is. If you're serious about growing a successful design business, if you've had an existing design business that's been running for a while and you're looking for what that next step is to move towards better revenue, or if you're just getting started, feel free to have a look at the link in the description. You've got the opportunity to have a look at some resources, including the ability to book a 15 minute call with our team as well. So just to give you a bit of a background, I obviously run ProfitableDesigner.com, which is a company that helps designers become more profitable from their expertise and build more profitable design businesses. Everything's based on my own experience in building my own seven figure design business, okay? And I only started it really eight years ago. I was a freelancer for a long amount of time and I was really struggling to make the leap or the transformation from working nine to five to doing my own thing. Everything that I'm gonna take you through, I think I've got like seven or eight points that I wanna to cover today, are really the biggest milestone steps that allowed me to make the leap to finally quitting my own job, getting it to $30,000 per month within 90 days, and then after that, turning it into an $80,000 a month design business 60 days later with the inclusion of Google Ads. So let's get into the first step here, and this is to read Zero to One by Peter Thiel. This is probably the best book on how to succeed as an entrepreneur that I've ever read. And like I said, a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna give you in this episode is around how to think about starting so that you're setting yourself up for success instead of failure like most design business owners do. This book really teaches you that there's two types of businesses. There's the zero businesses, who are the businesses that are the me too businesses who are just copying what other businesses are doing, trying to offer the same product potentially better and cheaper with better customer service and then there's one businesses. These are businesses that are offering the market something completely revolutionary, where they've got no competition, where the vast majority of the market disagree with what they're selling because it's so against the status quo. You wanna aim to be a one business. This is a business that offers something that nobody else in the market is offering or provides a new option, a new opportunity, or a new alternative as to how to get to a specific outcome or a result that the market want to move toward. He was giving university lectures and one of the students just loved the content so much. He asked, hey, do you mind if I write notes from your lectures and we can turn it into a book? And he agreed and it become a New York Times bestseller. That's how awesome the content in this book is. So the next step here is understanding the success formula, which is as simple as this. Success equals a game plan, a really good game plan, multiplied by the implementation of that game plan to the power of time. Okay, that's what success equals. So what you can obviously see, there's a few components with this. I'm obviously sharing the graphic to make this a bit easier to understand, but you need to have a really good game plan, right? So you need to have the right things in place. You need to understand the right things. You need to know about economics, about finance, about how to position yourself entrepreneurially. And that's something that the zero to one book is gonna do really well. Then you need the implementation of that game plan. So we all know that great theory and ideas is nothing if we don't actually implement those things into action and into daily practice. So daily practice becomes the next really important multiplier. And then the next thing is to the power of time. So how long you implement the game plan for dictates how successful you're going to be. And the reason that this is a to the power instead of a multiplier is because if you consistently implement a game plan over time, you exponentially increase your chances of hitting success because all of the actions and the implementation that you're taking compounds over time. And this is how to think about it. The growth that you'll experience in the first year of your business will be nothing like the growth that you experience in the second year if you continue to implement the same game plan. And that's because you're connecting to more people, you're getting better at running the sales process, you're getting better at understanding the offers, you're absorbing more information and content, you're getting more market and feedback, and that allows you to build better offers, which allows you to better market, which allows you to get better outcomes for your customers and clients, which allows you to be more valuable, which allows you to generate more revenue. And that's what really brings me on to the next point is that you wanna 
commit to the cause for years. Okay, so one of the things that I see that a lot of people make the mistake doing is that they just try to buy a strategy online, like a how to you know connect to clients through Facebook. And they're like, okay, I'm gonna try this for a couple of days. And they try it for a couple of days and they don't see immediate results, so they stop doing it. And then they go try to find the next strategy, the next shiny object. You need to commit to the cause for years. You need to have the mindset that I'm gonna to stick to this game plan and you wanna do all the hard work to figure out what's the right game plan for your specific market, you know, your skill set, and the kind of clients that you wanna work with. And you wanna go, I'm not gonna stop doing this for the next 10 years. And I'm gonna do what it takes to continually just incrementally take action, learn from that action, and then try to come back with smarter versions of action, right? This is what it takes to succeed. This is what's gonna allow you to take that idea of you know the exponential multiplier of time and go succeed because it really does take time and it takes you consistently running and doing the reps in order to get the feedback to make the changes that allow you to exponentially take the next step forward. When you're getting started, the distance between positive events or booking calls or closing sales is gonna be really great, but the more that you stick at it, the closer the distance between those sales and potential opportunities until the point that they're regularly and consistently happening all the time. Well, that takes a period of time to do. And most people step into a new strategy or step into a new game plan, and they take two days to determine whether it's successful or not. And this is the big issue, is they aren't committing to the game plan for a long amount of time. So you wanna commit to your game plan for five, 10, heck, 20 years. So the next step here is to learn sales and how offers are put together. So one thing that's gonna drastically increase the speed at which you move towards your own design business revenue goals if you're getting started is understanding how to run a proper sales process and understanding how to build offers instead of selling design services. So selling is obviously hyper important. What you'll find a lot of designers do is they just get into the market and they say, okay, I'm opening up a design shop. And then their sales process is basically, okay, well, what do you want me to design? If you just simply research some effective sales processes or just read some really good sales books, you'll understand how to ask the right questions to uncover the right problem, which will frame the opportunity for how you need to help them. And then if you learn how to put offers together, if you learn how to better package your expertise, if you learn how to productize your knowledge and what it is that you do, you'll start to put better offers in front of people based on better information that you've extracted through the sales process. So the quicker that you can get up to speed with what goes into a great sales process and what goes into putting together great offers, the quicker you're gonna be able to move immediately the minute that you do get opportunity through the door. You see a lot of designers just get started and they just listen, they go, okay, well, what do you want me to design? And of course, if you just go design what the person tells you to design, you're gonna get stuck charging based on how long it takes you to design that thing. But if you go learn how to run a real sales process and you learn how to build an offer that takes advantage of that sales process, then you're gonna to start to create disconnect between how hard you work and what you can actually get paid for your expertise. Next step here, don't worry about your branding or your website, just completely ignore it, okay? Too many designers, when they wanna start their own design business, you know, they might be working nine to five or they might just have learnt their skill set. you know, their Adobe software or they've learnt how to actually design stuff for their marketplace. They spend way too much time agonizing over their branding or their website. So generally what we hear a lot of people saying, especially if they're newbies, they'll go, oh, I wanna get started on, you know, reaching out to my market, but I need to build a branding and website first. The problem with this is it generally takes people like, three to six months to get those things in order when they're just getting started. This time should be spent, invested in the next step, which I'm gonna cover out now. So what will happen is most designers will spend one, two, three months getting their branding and website up and running before they actually start hitting the road and starting to connect to their marketplace. And the problem with this is that that's three months that you could have been developing the habit of connecting to the market. And that's the next really important step here which is connecting to prospects every day. So what I'm gonna get at here, guys, is that the success of your business hinges mostly on your ability to connect to potential people. Getting in front of the marketplace who aren't aware of who you are and what you do, and getting them to understand how you might be able to potentially help them. 
This is a task that you should be focused on every single day. And the major reason designers don't grow is because they set up shop and they just wait and hope for people to come to them, right? All real businesses are built on proactive business development. And the reason that you don't wanna spend any time in marketing or branding is because you need to connect to the market and you need to develop the habit of connecting to people, producing content and starting conversations so that you can figure out how you can be most valuable to the market and where the biggest opportunity is for you to provide value so that you can then go build the branding and the website that reflects where you've uncovered the most opportunity. Most designers do this back the front. They go, I'm gonna be a designer who sells branding services, and then they connect to five or six people, and then people don't respond as well as they could because everybody probably knows a designer that does that. It is far more effective for you to just say, look, I'm just gonna start reaching out to the marketplace now. I'm gonna start conversations, see where the pain points are, run people through the sales process when I can get them through the sales process because I've learned how to run sales and then try to make an offer to them if I think I can help. And then where you build the most momentum doing that, continually connect to people every single day, but then build branding and website that reflects where you're getting the best outcomes and where you're getting the best response. And then the next step kind of ties into this idea of thinking about putting together offers, but what you wanna do is focus on value, not design. What do I mean by this? Well, I'm just emphasizing the point here that you'll grow way quicker, you'll get to your revenue goals far, far quicker than you could selling design if you focus on value first, which basically means what does my market really care about? What are they trying to achieve? And how can I think in terms of just getting them to their goals? So nothing kills a designer more than the fact that they want to identify as a design business and a powerful designer who's award-winning, who's got this great design process and this design portfolio. This is like kryptonite to the market because the market only care about what they want. They want to get to their results. They want to get to their outcomes. And if you're just prepared to focus on delivering your market value instead of being a designer, this is going to do a couple of things. First, it's going to allow you to better communicate how you can help your market because now you're not so much talking about design, but you're talking about the transformation that you can help your customers and clients make. And the second awesome thing with that is that now that you're not identifying As a designer, you're more focusing on identifying as somebody that can help them make a transformation. You're gonna make assessments about how to improve your offer based on getting them to that transformation, which means that you're gonna start to consider things and adding things to your offer that most designers aren't prepared to. And these are the things that allow you to create competitive differentiation because you're now focused on the transformation. Somebody might come to you and go, well, why should I pick you over all the other designers I could pick? And you can go, look, I focus on this transformation. This is the transformation you're trying to make. Most designers will only help you with this, but then what are you gonna do with this, this, and this when you run into problems here? Well, my offer takes into account these things as well. This is how you create what Peter Thiel says in zero to one is a one business, a business that's doing something completely different to the rest of the marketplace that contributes towards a greater outcome. And everything can be really tied together with this final point here, guys. And it's probably the most important point here, but it's build an appetite for continual learning, okay? At the end of the day, you don't just wanna learn about how to become a better designer. You need to in tandem learn how to become a better entrepreneur, better marketer, better salesperson, better investor of your time, more productive. You need to learn a wide variety of skill sets and become really a polymath in the area around helping your clients get to their results. And this involves learning more about your best customers and client situation, more about the result they're trying to move towards, figuring out what new technologies are coming in and converging in your industry, and how you can continually add or subtract things from your offers so that you can get your customers and clients better results, okay? Then just absorbing all the content that you can inside, but more importantly, outside of the design space means over time, that you're gonna have a smarter base understanding of everything. And this is the key to any great business is they just make really smart decisions around who to reach out to on what platform, what to say and what to offer throughout the sales process. And you can't improve in any of those things if you're just focusing on how do I become a better designer. So there we go guys, that's how to start a successful design business. This is all based on my own experience, you know, not only building my own seven figure design business, but helping over 500 people 
build a more profitable design business as well. If you are interested and you're serious about building a more profitable design business or you're just getting started like we've discussed in this video and you want further help and guidance in regards to how to make those first steps forward so that you can move towards your revenue goals, have a look at the link in the description below. We've got way more resources over at profitabledesigner.com including the ability to book a 15 minute call with somebody on our team. But even if you never book a call, even if you never spend a dime with us, that's completely fine. What this show is all about is just arming designers with a smarter level of base understanding so that they can become more profitable selling their design expertise. That's it for today, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.